Okay, welcome. Um, my name is Jaume Sanchez Elias. Um, I come from Barcelona. Um, that's my website. That's my Twitter handle. And basically, um, what I do for a living is um, I work for a production company called Be Real. Um, we specialize in interactive experiences. For basically, we we'll do the work for advertisement agencies. Um, I've worked in projects like uh, if you remember the Wilderness Downtown, one of the, one of the first um, get to find your home in Google Maps experiences a few years back. That was using CSS and Canvas. There was no 3D acceleration on the browser yet. Um, the CNN campaign tracker for the election, the presidential election in the United States of 2012, this was using uh, SVG and Canvas rendering. Um, the Google Maps Cube game, this was one of the first games in browser to use uh, the WebGL, the first uh, release of, of, of WebGL two years, or three years back. And recently, the, for instance, for the Gravity movie, the official website or the 3D experience in which you can navigate uh, through, the, through the, basically the elements in the movie. But basically what I want to talk about is what I do in my, uh, in my spare time. Um, I really like mm, 3D graphics, I really like um, surfacing, which is what you would call texturing or creating the, the sense of, of an object being solid and having a texture shading and post-processing. So the, all this is achieved very fairly easily in a browser nowadays with WebGL. Um, if you've tried uh, to create graphics with uh, other languages like most, mainly C, C++, it's a bit difficult to get into because it's uh, basically you have to manage your own memory. So before you get your first model to run on the screen, you probably have had a lot of problems with allocating all the buffers, I've had um, memory problems, uh, the system is crashing, so it gets a bit uh, cumbersome. Uh, with JavaScript, it takes a lot of the load, it removes a lot of the load from, from that process and then lets you just go into the graphics programming and, and iterate really, really rapidly. So what's WebGL? WebGL, the definition, it's a, the web graphics library, the JavaScript API for rendering interactive 3D graphics and 2D graphics within any compatible web browser without the use of plugins. So that's, that's pretty important because before we, go, we had WebGL, we had to rely on, on Flash, Flash 3D or Swift or mm, many other uh, plugins that we had to install. So it wasn't really readily available on any, on any device. This definition is extracted from the Chronos.org website, the consortium that uh, drives the, the evolution of, of WebGL and other open standards for, for 3D graphics and, and GP, GPU and other stuff. So why do we need uh, an API in JavaScript to, to use the, the GPU? So basically, What's a GPU? That's, again, definition from Wikipedia. A graphics processing unit is a specialized electronic circuit designed to rapidly manipulate and alter memory to accelerate the creation of images in a frame buffer intended for output to a display. So basically what we get is many of the operations that we usually do to create a raster graphics. It's already done by the hardware, so it's accelerating many of the uh, primary functions that we, that we will be using. The key of, of, of this technology and why it's spread so, so widely to many devices is that they're very efficient at manipulating um, information for computer graphics. And this is based because the architecture they use, it's mainly based on being able to parallelize lots of executions at the same time. So while the CPUs were trying to provide lots of new instructions for doing many things that you wouldn't require on your tasks, GPUs specialized on having a more limited set of operations, but being able to run a lot of them at the same time. 
And this is basically because when you think about uh, an image, once it gets to uh, a screen, which is a frame buffer, or into a texture format, which is, again, a frame buffer, if you're able to separate the operation that creates the color for each one of the pixels in this image, you can basically throw a single thread for each one of the pixels, and it would be all run in one execution. So that's what they're trying to, to achieve. That's what they, they, they facilitate through hardware. So there's several APIs for doing this kind of work with uh, 3D, with uh, 3D accelerated hardware. Um, WebGL is based on OpenGL. Basically, uh, actually it's based on OpenGL ES, which is the one from embedded systems. It, OpenGL is the one it's running on your desktop computer and your laptops. OpenGL ES is the one that is running on your Sorry, on your on your phone, or on on embedded displays, on tablets, and it's more limited because it's tried to provide a even more reduced set of instructions that will run in 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 those devices. So, the what they started to trying to bring OpenGL into the browser, they decided to do it as a, an API um, presented or exposed through the DOM. Uh, canvas element. So instead of creating a new object or a new placeholder for 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 WebGL, it's basically uh, with Canvas you know that you, you can uh, get the 2D context and create use the operations to draw lines, draw circles or gradients. You can also uh, get the 3D context and then use all the WebGL API to create uh, uh, graphics. Keep in mind that in the end. Um, WebGL is creating a flat image. So even though the data that you can feed to the system is 3D or 4D or ND, the actual final result is an image. So technically it's a 2D image API, very similar to the, to the canvas. And basically it follows the OpenGL ES 2.0 specification, the one that is running on, on most phones. Uh, with some concessions made for JavaScript because it, it takes away all the memory management and several mm, issues. So why, what and why do we use uh, 3.js? So if you ever had, if you ever looked at, at the WebGL code, it's very verbose, it's very long and it's really not clear what anything is doing. It's very low level, it's very, uh, the API really shows how you address and you work with the GPU. There's no abstraction there. And it really, it's really bare bones in the sense that there's, the GPU doesn't care about how your model looks, how your operations have to look. It just basically exposes how to tell the GPU how to do stuff. So the aim of 3.js was to create a lightweight 3D library with a very low level of complexity. In other words, for, for dummies. That's those are words for the, from the, the, the creator, uh, Ricardo Cabello. Um, this basically comes from back in the, in, in the mid-90s, everyone was creating their own uh, 3D graphics library. Um, and Ricardo created this uh, 3D library for ActionScript, which ran on Flash. And when the browser started to get more more competent and, and more efficient, um, he decided to port the the his library to JavaScript, with the idea of providing a library that could run 3D content or regardless of the renderer. Which means that um, ideally you could run anything on Canvas or CSS or SVG, and then WebGL. So, which means that you can have your models, your textures, and if there's WebGL, it's gonna use WebGL, and if not, it could use uh, Canvas. It's not that ideal, because there's, of course, many things that you can do in WebGL that you cannot do on, with any other technologies, but it kind of works. It's, you can still use the library f only for the 3D parts and not use the WebGL uh, rendering uh, backend. Um, so the, the, the idea of being for dummies, it's basically for people with not a lot of knowledge of 3D graphics. So mainly designers or people that can, that want to start with, with 
with 3D graphics or want to provide some 3D content into the browser without actually having to go through all uh, the literature for, for that. So mm, my original talk was a lot more like this. It was more about mm, code, but I understand that it's probably not the, the, <laughs> the uh, adequate audience. Uh, I'll try to go quickly about how this, this works. Um, this is how to set a very simple uh, scene with 3DJS. So the main concepts here for 3JS, it's you have a renderer, which is the object that will handle the context and will actually execute the instructions to draw whatever you want to draw. And this, in this case, is a WebGL renderer, but it could be a CSS or SVG renderer. You have a scene, which is the, the, the wall in which you put objects in, and that scene, it's basically a placeholder for uh, meshes, uh, lights, um, helpers, and all that. Then, so in this case, we create a scene. We create a camera. The camera is what is going to define how what we put into the scene is going to look when we render it. And we have a different, uh, different two different cameras, which is the perspective camera, in which you can get 3D graphics with perspective, in which things that are far out of the way look smaller or you can have an orthographic camera, in which everything looks like straight ahead. We create a, a, a renderer, in this case, which is attached to the, to the, to the document body. And we create a, a mesh, um, an object. In this case, a cube. All objects in, in, in 3JS are basically what's called meshes. Uh, and they use a geometry and a material. A geometry, it's the structure that, it's the, that defines how this object is in space. So it's the set of vertices, which are the points in 3D space that define the shape. The faces, which defines how those vertices are connected to create a solid surface. And a few other um, attributes that uh, define how it's going to be texture, how it's going to look. But that defines basically how the object is, how the object um, would look. Mm, if it were 3D printed, it would be white. And then the material defines how that object is rendered under the, all the circumstances in the scene, which based on the materials, on the lights, on the ambient light. So it creates, uh, it processes all that. So we add this cube, creating a mesh with a geometry material. We add it to the scene. We move the camera a bit far away, because if not, the camera would be just in the origin. The origin is the 0, 0, 0, is where everything is placed. Uh, and we have then a render function, a render loop. And it just tells the renderer to render a scene with a camera. And you can have many scenes, and you can have many cameras. And you can play with all of them, creating different, different, different things. Um, we're using the request animation frame for efficient rendering on the browser. Um, if you're familiar with that, that's the way to go. If, um, if not, uh, it basically tells the, it, it's a function that the, the browser has to let us uh, begin our rendering frame at the beginning of the browser rendering frame. So we are all on the same uh, frame slice. So, this would basically, um, if, you, if you put this in a, in, a, in a document and run it, you would basically get this. So yeah, it's a cube and it's green. Um, it's looking, it doesn't look that 3D because the camera is actually looking straight ahead, so there's no, there's no perspective to be perceived. But if we check the same thing, but with animation, then you can see that the cube is actually a 3D cube. It's, as I said, it's basically so solid that there's no, you cannot tell which face it's facing what, you cannot tell volume because there's no shadows, there's no highlights. And the spheres are showing where the vertices are for this cube. So this cube has uh, eight um, vertices. It's got not six faces, I mean, it's got what you would call six faces, but it's actually 12 faces, because uh, in 3D graphics, everything is a triangle. So even if you have a, a 
flat surface, which is a quad, it's actually made of two triangles. So what we can do, and that's another fun part of this, is that you can um, play with this. So we can tell the material, uh, sorry, probably, to be wireframe so we can see what's going on. And then you can see that's, that's what actually the, the, the geometry looks like. So it's all these eight vertices connected in several ways to create this appearance of a cube. Um, this, this, geomet this geometry can be modified, this geometry can be generated, this geometry can, lots of things can be, done, can be done. So that's basically the main difference between, for instance, SVG, in which SVG has a drawing path of the silhouette of the object, and then the, the, the content is filled. In 3D, it would be very difficult to have that kind of, of, of mm, definition of an object. So it's basically all the vertices in 3D space and then how they are connected. So it's a different set of arrays. So if we try to do something a bit better, uh, sorry. So we can do this. This is essentially the same idea, still. Instead of a cube, we have a sphere. And it actually, it's a cosahedron sphere, but it looks like a sphere. It's got uh, a texture, which is a, a diffuse map, which is what it looks like uh, the Earth, with all the continents and all the, the, the sea. It's got a normal map, which is what is used to create this f sensation of of kind of bumpiness, if you, if you can see in the mountains, it looks like it's, it's a bit more bumpy, it's not that flat. Um, and then it's got um, a light in the scene coming from, from that direction, from the top, the, and it's telling the, the object that it's uh, specular, it's kind of shiny. Uh, by having a specular color of white, we're making it look plasticky. If it were more like the color of, of the object would be more metal. And that's basically all, the, all defined in the, in, the, in the material. So again, if we... Uh, if we check the material in wireframe mode, you can see that this has a w lot of, uh, of triangles. So if you remember yesterday's uh, Cameron talk about how he was uh, creating the, the movement across the globe, um, by calculating the, the vector and interpolating bilinearly. Basically, that is what the GPU is doing. So once the GPU knows how to transform all those vertices, and they have to look like a sphere, they have to look like a sphere in a 3D space, like projected. All these gaps that you would see are linearly interpolated by the GPU. So y there's a lot of work that you can offload to the, to the shaders. So it creates everything in the rest. And that operation that you create in the middle, that operation that you say, all this empty space, I want you to fill it with this, it's actually a program. It's something that you can specify a set of instructions, and it will do that. It will do whatever you want it to do. But you have to tell it what to do. So all this is basically standard, part of the standard 3.js uh, uh, framework. It's got um, a large set of, um, uh, sorry, okay. It's got a, by default, you've got a large set of uh, geometries, a crazy amount of, of different generators of geometries, uh, depending on what you need. It can be text, it can be an extrusion of a shape, you can create uh, surfaces with splines. Um, you can create um, different materials. All those are different materials. Uh, you can create uh, materials like lam like lambertian, which means they are kind of diffuse, not that shiny. You can create foam materials, which are more shiny. Uh, or you can have your own shaders and create whatever material you want to, to create. It can, it's completely up to the, to the developer. There's different lights also. Um, with some, some are omnidirectional, some are uh, spotlights, some cast shadows, some are uh, for area filling. 
and the cameras. So all these are different um, ideas of using surface uh, shaders to create a sense of object. But um, of course not everything that we want to use are cubes or mm, basic models like not torus or mm, cylinders. So there's loaders for different uh, formats of geometry. So it's very easy to embed on your, on your graphics uh, pipeline and um, regardless of what you use, um, there's probably exporter for 3JS or a loader. And you can load uh, from 3D Studio, you can load Collada, you can load um, everything, anything that you, that, that you need. And it will, it will go through its geometry, so once you create a mesh with that geometry, the materials will still apply. So it's pretty cool. So the true power of WebGL are the shaders. And that's very important because they, 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 it's, it's like really acknowledged by them. Uh, in the original versions of, of OpenGL, everything was what was called a fixed pipeline in which you would just send the, the, the vertices and everything would be transformed in perspective and it would be shaded based on some parameters. When they presented the what's called the shader model and there's different iterations of that, basically they created the programmable pipeline in which you can do anything you want to do. So you're not bound to the traditional process of creating 3D graphics. Uh, that, cre that enables two things. First, very cool um, shading algorithms, crazy things that you can do for modifying geometry on the vertex shader. The vertex sh shader is a program that you can specify that it's executed for each vertex on your geometry. So you can displace it, you can squash it, you can it. You can do lots of things. You can set the variables that are going to be interpolated across the fragment shader. So there's a lot of things that you can calculate there. And for instance, usually you have way less, uh, way fewer um, vertices than actual pixels on the screen. So it makes sense to try to get as much on the vertex shader so the fragment shader would, would be able to run through all those pixels, filling in the void with something that's not calculated per pixel. And the fragment shader, which is what this run, I mean, why a fragment shader in, and not a pixel shader? It's basically because what you call a pixel might come from different fragments. It can be gathered and then what you actually, like if you have uh, multi-sample anti-aliasing, you're actually running four fragments in a pixel or eight fra fragments in a pixel to get uh, smooth um, uh, curves. Um, and then the fragment shader basically runs another program. Those programs are, are um, coded in a language that is called GLSL, Graphics Library Shading Language. It's very similar to C. It's very powerful. It, it's basically algebra. And, and you can do all your shading operations, all your bump mapping operations, and all that. The key here is trying to turn your traditional algorithms, which run uh, Usually when you create something in Canvas, when you create something with, with, with particles or with lines, your algorithm, it's aware or has available data of what's around what you're drawing because you've got everything in memory. Uh, with the vertex and the fragment shader, there's, that's not really, I mean, it's possible, but it's not clear. So you basically have to make your operation standalone. Everything that starts from one point, it has to go the other end on its own. That's, what, that's how the GPU can paralyze everything, because there's no dependencies. A pixel doesn't require to know what other, another pixel is doing in order to be executed. So then you can throw 16 million pixels at the same time. Um, so I'm going to show you something. Um, I think it makes more sense to show uh, a, a demo of what can be achieved easily. So uh, instead of showing a rotating cube, um, day before yesterday, uh, on the mic if you were in the in the talk about migration data, um, it's a, it's a data set of all the countries that mig where do they migrate and where they migrate uh, to, and it's r available on the internet. So I said, okay, let's try to get that and give it a new visualization. How how would it look if we were possible to make it in 3D. So I 
coded this. So this is, again, a geometry. In this case, it's a sphere. It's got a texture with all the, all, all the world. Uh, I had to overlay the political borders, and they're a bit uh, wonky. And those cubes are more geometry marking all th where all the different um, cities in the data set are, are located. Um, so the data set is downloaded from the, from the page of the project. The cities are um, fetched through the, via the Google service, uh, the Google geocoder uh, service. So basically, I didn't have to type anything, just make the, the JavaScript code resolve the coordinates. And then um, you can basically just look for what's how the migration flux for a specific country looks like. So let's check the United States and create a lot of uh, lines uh, with different colors. So the idea here is that you're, instead of trying to go around the Earth with different uh, lines, this is inside the Earth. So you're looking, you can create direct lines between uh, countries because they are in direct uh, line of sight. And kind of try to, to see how it looks like. Then, for instance, you can see that the biggest um, um, immigration uh, country in is in the United States, it's Mexico, but you can check other countries and you can see what's with Guatemala and move the, um, the map around. So it makes for kind of the similar exploration uh, system as the bilat bilateral graphics, but it's on 3D, so it basically lets the, the user to try to explore it on, on, on its own, like, like a physical um, geographical thing. And then you can look for more like what's going on with France, lots of lines. And or China, where are they going? Because South Korea, South Korea. So basically all this is creating um, geometry in real time, pushing it into the scene, removing it when you select a different city, and and doing all, all in real time. And everything, it's, it's, it's run on the, uh, on the shader, so on the GPU. So basically, it's, it's very fast to be able to, to move things around. I mean, I, there could be more data, and it would still run smoothly. So the, um, the thing is that once you, you've got this, uh, and you can um, play with it and quickly iterate and see how it looks, how, how it could be, move the camera, place the, the user in a different perspective. Um, you can also go for what uh, Nicolas said the other day, for the wow factor, so you can start adding things that are basically executed on, on top of uh, your frame buffer. So all this that it's in the screen, it's actually an image, so you can process it. You can use it, and like you use Photoshop on, on uh, to create, uh, to add filters and to create a bloom or change the color. That's something that you can do in a shader really, really easily, because if you think about it, like, I want to do grayscale. How you do grayscale in, in, in the CPU? You go pixel by pixel, and you turn it into, into a gray value. Uh, with this, you can do the same exact calculation, but run it on all uh, lots of pixels at the same time. So for instance, you can do, this is running um, a vignette shader on top of this, so that's why it looks more bright in the, in the center, and, it, and it's darker on the, on the sides. Um, but um, you could do, let me see, um, you could do chromatic aberration, uh, which kind of looks like a, like a lens. You know, you can make it look like it's, I don't know if it's visible. So this is kind of a, of a blurry, blurry thing that adds, I don't know, you may want to make it look like it's through a uh, telescope or, or something. So you can easily add this layer, this filter, and, and run it uh, on top of what you're rendering. Or we can do, um, let's see, we can do Bloom. Uh, in which it will look like this. It's sometimes a bit too much, but you can have like rays of light. Or you can see how things look. So sometimes you can use it to create some some visual cues of what what you're trying to to show. Like let me see. Uh, we could go to a 
Jude. So yeah, there's lots of light. I mean, it's not really useful for visualization, but if you want to do it in, in a transition, like this is what we're going to show, then it's, it's very, it's very mm, engaging. And it basically, I mean, it's just running this shader on the lines and the city locations and compositing it on top of, uh, of the map image. Um, this, is doing, this, is using, this is using O3.js. It's a library I've been working on. It's called Wagner. Uh, it's uh, a, like a composer of for uh, post-processing effects on top of 3JS. So uh, 3JS has their own has its own um, rendering uh, post-processing system. It's a bit cumbersome. It's not really in the line of the API idea that the the project wants to have. So this one is a bit uh, easier to use. And for instance, you can also do a bit more useful uh, like for instance you can do some tilt shift uh, very easily so it's something like this you can see that I don't know if it's very apparent the top and the bottom are blurred so the 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 attention is drawn to the to the center I don't know if it's if it's really visible um, and once you have this uh, since you're already running, I mean, it's not very taxing, and it could very well run on a on a on a browser on a mobile phone. Um, you can basically add more stuff. Like it, the browser is a really powerful platform right now, so you can you can try to to explore uh, not only visualization but how the user interacts and how the how they explore data. So, for instance, um, let me try to load something on my phone. Second, mm -hmm. let's see if it works with the wireless here. Yeah. So yeah, basically, we, we can enable users to, to explore data with their using their phone as a visor. You know, so something like this. Let me see. Uh, where are the states? There. You know, so it's very. It's right there. I mean, it's 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 super simple to, to use, and we don't have to worry about performance because most of the, the the tasks are in the in the GPU, and the GPU is pretty um, ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. I don't know how to say that word, uh, but it's 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 almost everywhere, uh, and it's going to be running on on iOS really really soon. So it makes an interesting way of. Um, adding really, really engaging content for the users on, on their browser, on their home. And this is going to also run on, on smart TVs, it's going to run on toasters, it's going to run on, on, on everything. So, so we're, we're working on, on, on a very, I mean, I know there's a large set of JavaScript libraries, but we're, try, we're really trying to, to provide with, with the easiest way of, of, of creating these things without you having to worry. So, yeah. Um, that's basically it, I think. Let me see. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is this is the story of the of the vertex shader. So it's it's pretty technical and boring, and that's basically it. <laughs> but if you got any questions, any 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 ideas that would look cool on the browser, let me know. Those are my my data on the internet, and thank you. Everybody else saw it, but I uh, took my eye off the ball at the end there. What were you doing with the phone? You, are you using that as an input device to, to control the camera? Um, yeah, it's got a gyroscope. Yeah. So I'm using WebRTC to map the device orientation event in this phone to my camera in my page. And it's basically, it's very cool actually because it goes to the internet, it creates a signaling session, and then it connects to my laptop directly. So it's super fast. I mean, even if with the wireless being a bit spotty everywhere, it's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, WebRTC. Uh, 
Uh, thanks, that was, that was great. My, my question was, you mentioned it at the end that it would work on some toasters. Um, could you just say something about the browser support for WebGL oh, yeah, and where right. that's out at the moment? Yeah, I, it was in the notes. So, concept of support, like things that work mostly everywhere. Uh, you've got Firefox on all across all uh, platforms. That means uh, Windows, Linux, OS X, and Android. Same deal for Chrome. Um, Safari. I don't think it's enabled by default yet, or is it now? Um, I don't really know because I have, got it, I have it enabled. You can enable it, and actually the implementation is really good. Um, then Opera for desktop is following the Chromium project, so it's got also WebGL. Uh, IE Internet Explorer, it's IE 11, and they actually have a really good WebGL implementation. I mean, that's like the standard thing that you would expect uh, to, to, be, to be running. If you try to do something more complex, uh, mainly the OpenGL world and the whole graphics world, it's a bit messy with that because some things are available through I what they call uh, extensions. And the extensions have to be enabled on your WebGL implementation and then have to be enabled and correctly implemented on your driver. So that's why sometimes the, the browser vendors decide that this feature is not ready yet, so we're not going to al uh, allow that to, to run. So you have to check for that, and then maybe it will run, maybe it will not. And then there's the big one, which is uh, Safari on, on iOS. Um, the, beta is the, the beta is there. It's working, and there's been a lot of work trying to get all the demos that are out there to run and hopefully it's happening. So pretty much it's, it's everywhere, it's happening. Great, thanks, really very impressive, very good. I mean, if there's a format, if there's a definition of the format, there's probably a loader. Uh, I don't know about SketchUp. Um, I think so. Or if not, you can probably use one to go into another mo more popular mm, format and then into 3JS. I know. I usually use OBG or mm, yeah, OBG. Go through Blender. Yeah, there's, there's a Python. Uh, Plugin for for exporting, yeah. So it's it's pretty easy to 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 add into your into the workflow and and get things running quickly. Could you please publish the source code of the examples you showed today? Would it be possible? Uh, yeah, I'll. I mean, right now it's 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 a land, it's a cluster mine. Like it's you don't want to you don't want to put your eyes on on, on that you don't want to <laughs> be <laughs> subject them to that but yeah I'll never mind I would I wouldn't I'll I'll put everything mind. but not the the WebRTC part because that's using a server that I don't want people to know that it's there so they can use it so that part is probably just gonna be left for the reader. Thanks.